What is up guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. So before we get started with the video, let me give you guys a quick rundown and introduction as to who I am. Uh, my name is Trenton. I am a photographer based out of Washington. I shoot both digital and film. I do a lot of independent work like such as landscapes and, and like personal projects and stuff like that. I also do a lot of photography work for a small record label called i5 based out of Burlington, Washington and it is run by um, a good friend of mine named Desi. He also goes by his DJ name as DJ Protocol. Um, with them I do a lot of photo shoots for things like say like album or music promotion, um, any type of local events that they host or if Desi has any sort of events where he's DJing at in different clubs. For instance, I've been to Wenatchee with him before. We've gone to Lake Chelan and stuff like that. I also do a lot of photo shoots and photo work for them through their concerts that they hold, whether it's local or kind of like smaller events that are at actual theaters. All right, so before I get caught rambling about myself a little bit too much, let's get moved on to what you guys came here for, which is the Minolta SRT 101. So I'm not necessarily going to be like a channel that reviews cameras and stuff like that. I do buy and sell cameras on the side as something to do for fun because I just find it interesting to, you know, buy old cameras at Goodwill and other like thrift shops or antique stores, repair them and then sell them again just to make sure it works because, you know, I think it's cool. There's also like a million different other channels and different other videos that will probably be on there about the SRT because it is a pretty popular camera. I know King Japes has a pretty good one he does about the SRT 101 and stuff like that. So I'm not necessarily going to do that. But I will tell you about my experience with this particular model of this camera and what I used it for and so on and so forth. So with my experience with this particular Minolta camera, um, when I found it, I found that that came with a, a rather large kit where it came with a 50mm 1.7, which kind of is standard for the cameras of that time. Uh, it came with a an unbranded 135mm f2.8, and then it also came with a Formula 5 28mm f2.8 as well. Um, I used all of these lenses and they all worked great. Um, no lens flare, no funguses, nothing like that. Um, the camera shot well, I had no issues with any of the shutter, which is another typical problem of cameras of this age. Um, I had no problem with the shutter blades, the mirror didn't get stuck or anything like that, it was pretty great. But there is one little hiccup I did come across, which was user error, not at the fault of the camera at all whatsoever. Um, I did not close the film back all the way. I lost about half a roll of pictures that day. Let me explain about that a little bit further. So here's the whole story about the situation with me not closing the back of the film door. So I went and took my girlfriend and I down to Owen Beach here in Tacoma and while we were out there, I was shooting some, what was it, I think it was Kodak 400, just some basic, you know, easy store-bought drugstore film. Um, and I was walking around and just wanted to take some good pictures of her, use all the different lenses, just kind of to experience and see all the different capabilities and shortcomings of all the lenses with which I didn't find any. Um, what I found out happened was, is I didn't close it all the way I think it might just be with this particular model maybe, but it was a little bit difficult to close. Or maybe it just didn't latch all the way, being my fault. And it had caught on to the jacket that I was wearing and just kind of flipped itself open while it was kind of being held over my shoulder. Um, and in the process, I did get a lot of good photos out of it, which I am happy that those ones did make it and survive the ex blasts of light that I got from having the back door open. but. I did lose a lot of good photos too, which I'm a little sad about those, but I'm at least glad that I was able to get those good photos that survived and on the remaining roll of film that was not exposed or had any pictures exposed to it at all, I was able to get good pictures from those as well. Now these other set of photos that I did use this camera for to actually capture and get 
where more photos that are going to be focused and targeted to a project that I've been working on for a little while now. Um, if you keep update with me and stuff like that and if I keep making more videos like this you guys will find out more about that and whether if I release it to make it a public thing or if I just make it like a small personal thing I'll let you guys know then um what's it called but yeah so for instance the picture that you see in the background my computer screen behind me this whole time that's one of the photos that I had taken in this time and what we had done for this particular shoot was um, I had my girlfriend get into her bathrobe and just kind of make it seem like a situation where she's just getting ready for the day. It's the beginning of the day. She's getting ready, getting set up and stuff like that. And the meaning behind this project that I have for this particular set of photos is very meaningful and has a bit, a lot going on behind the scenes with it. So again, like I said, if I do make this more of a public thing for you guys to see and for you guys to access i'll let you guys know but it was more of just i had her sitting on the floor next to the mirror and taking some pictures in that manner um just kind of showing the vulnerability of someone just um i also had her move on to her desk at some points too to take, pic take some pictures there of her getting ready like getting makeup on and just getting ready for the day and then i was also using the props with some of the other things that she had on her desk to kind of give it some depth and some understanding and more of a in-person feel to it so to kind of wrap things up would i recommend this camera to somebody i mean of course i mean if you can find it and like how i did at a, a thrift store and it could be the camera by itself or a whole kit like I found it. But yeah, I would recommend it for someone who's learning. This would be a great camera for somebody to learn with. It's very simple and easy to use. It's a very good way of learning this, basically what they call like the three tri the perfect triangle photography, you know, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. It's a good way of learning about that. Um, and if anyone is curious, I will, I am planning on selling this camera. If you are to look for it and want this particular set, it will be on any one of the, on the film photography, Facebook sellers group. Um, yeah, it's a great camera. I had a great experience with it and I would keep it, but I have plenty of others that I keep for myself and I have a rather large collection of cameras. So this boy's got to go. But I did have a great experience with it. Again, like I said, the lens lenses were in great shape. There was no fungus, no nothing, nothing at all. The only hiccup I had with the camera altogether was pretty much my fault. So can't blame the camera for that. But yeah, thanks for checking out the channel, guys. Thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you guys later.